I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to this CCNA video practice exam, A Little More of Everything. A recent video I did where we mixed the question topics up a bit instead of having all 10 questions on the same topic was so popular we're going to do that again, and I'll have some more of these for you in the future. As usual with my video practice exams, we have 10 questions, some have choices, some do not. And we'll go through the questions fairly quickly so we stay under the 10 minute YouTube time limit. And that gives us plenty of time to go over the answers and the explanations at the end. So let's go ahead and dive in and get started with question one. Which of these four values serves as a keep alive for STP? We have a keep alive for almost everything in this business. Which one of these is a keep alive for STP? Of Cisco routers and switches, which one or both have all interfaces open by default? Is it routers, switches, both, or neither? Which of these commands allows a user to telnet to a router without knowing the enable password? Four fairly common commands. Which one can help us with that? Which of these routing protocols use hello packets to keep adjacencies alive? These are the four routing protocols you learn about in the CCNA curriculum. RIP versions 1 and 2, then EIGRP and OSPF. Which one or ones use hello packets? Where are the routing tables kept? Are they kept in RAM, ROM, Flash, or NVRAM? In which of these tables will an EIGRP successor route be found? We need to know, of course, what an EIGRP successor route is, but we also have to know where to find it or them. Okay. What term is given to representing a subnet mask or a, a network mask with the number of ones at the beginning of the mask? And for example, using slash 16 to represent a mask of 255-255-00. What term is given to doing that? You've just written a frame relay map statement. Which of these four values were required in that statement? Give me just a moment to look at those again. Feel free to pause the video if need be because we do go through the questions fairly quickly. The use of sub-interfaces is commonly used to circumvent what routing protocol rule? There are a couple of ways to do this, but using sub-interfaces is one way to do it. And then finally, is the letter P next to a route in the EIGRP topology table a good thing or a bad thing? And this is one of those two-in-one questions. Really, you have to know what the letter P stands for in an EIGRP topology table and then say whether or not that is good or bad. That's an important thing to know as well. All right, that concludes the question part. And I want to invite you out first off to the website, thebryantadvantage.com. We've got almost 300 free Cisco tutorials, videos, and practice exams out there now waiting for you. Plenty of free webinars. These have been very popular. We're going to be expanding the topics but plenty of CCNA information there for you. They're all live and they're all free. And you can visit slash ccnawebinars.htm at the website to see the current schedule. You don't need any headset, microphone, extra equipment. All you need are some speakers on your computer, which you obviously have or you wouldn't be hearing this, and uh, 60 minutes of your time and a desire to get certified. Also, make sure to visit the blog at thebryantadvantage.blogspot.com. Free practice exams every day videos, announcements of new webinars, and some great new features coming up to help you get Cisco and Microsoft Server 2008 certified. So I look forward to seeing you out there, and let's go through and check out these answers. Here, the keep alive for the spanning tree protocol, that's our BPDU. The LMI is a keep alive, really, but for frame relay, it does a lot more than that, but it does work with frame relay. And the STP really doesn't use hellos or acts. The BPDU is what we're looking for there. Cisco routers will have their interfaces shut by default, but Cisco switches are going to have the interfaces open by default. That's something we need to be aware of, not just for your exam, of course, but uh, for security reasons as well. So here, it's switches that have their interfaces open by default. 
Of these four commands, the Privilege Level 15 command when applied to the VTY lines will allow a user who's telnetting in and of course knows the VTY line password, but then at that point instead of being prompted for the enable password, if you put Privilege Level 15 on the VTY lines, they'll, put, they'll be put directly into enable mode or privilege mode and not have to worry about knowing the enable password. RIP version 1 and 2 do not use hello packets and they really don't form adjacencies at all actually but EIGRP and OSPF both do. Routing tables are kept in RAM so they are actually lost on a reload. An EIGRP successor route you recall from your studies that is the best route or best routes to a given destination if you have more than one with the exact same metric you'll actually find the successor route in two different EIGRP tables and that's the topology table and the route table. You won't see them in the neighbor table and there's no such thing as an EIGRP database table. This is prefix notation and if you're not familiar with this term or representing a subnet mask or network mask in this fashion then you need to be before your CCNA exam. You definitely want to brush up on that. And this is called prefix notation. In your frame map statement, while the word broadcast is common, it is actually not required. And you're going to see it so many times that you actually think it is required, but you can leave that broadcast option off. What you do need is the remote devices or the remote interface's IP address, because you're mapping that remote IP address to a local DLC. You will not need C or D either. You won't use the remote interface's DLC, and you definitely won't use the remote interface type. So of these four, the only one that's required is the remote device's IP address. The use of sub-interfaces is commonly used to get around the rule of split horizon. And finally, that letter P, actually it's a good thing. It stands for passive. And that sounds like we shouldn't use it, right? But it's a little counterintuitive. What passive means when it comes to EIGRP is that the uh, routing protocol, or actually the algorithm DUAL, D-U-A-L, is not currently calculating that route, which means it's okay to be used to transport data. Uh, otherwise, we could see it marked A for active, which sounds good, but, it act, but is actually bad because it is actively being calculated and we can't use it at that time. So again, the letter P next to a route in the topology table is good. The route is passive, and that means it can be used to transport data. Hope you enjoyed this video practice exam for the CCNA. I've got plenty more on YouTube and on my website and on the blog, as well as some other video sharing sites out here on the Internet. Again, I invite you out to the website. Plenty to see and do there, including the new webinar series and the questions and videos on the blog. I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and I'll see you at the website.